Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Weekly Waypoint. Today we are playing Old School RuneScape and we are facing off against the Winter Tot skilling boss. If you don't know what any of that means, don't worry, it's just background footage, but I will probably be talking more about RuneScape later in the video. Um, also worth noting, after I was done with this, I was like, oh, this is like the least visually interesting boss I could have filmed, but oh well, here we are now. The first and main thing I would like to talk about today is the live action version of Avatar The Last Airbender, which just released onto Netflix this week, or last week. I do these on Monday. Last week is when it came out. And this isn't a full thoughts on kind of a thing because I'm only halfway through. I've watched the first four episodes. There are eight. But before giving you my opinion, my opinion with a letter O and my take with a letter T, we, you can probably guess what it is from a title. But anyway, before I justify myself, I guess, let me give you some background. I didn't grow up with Avatar The Last Airbender, actually. Uh, yes, you can touch and shake your head. I <laughs> don't presume reader response, Christian. Don't presume audience response. I watched Avatar The Last Airbender in its entirety a few years ago as an adult, and I found it extremely fulfilling. I think it's one of the best animated shows ever made, and I really, really loved it. And then I watched Avatar The Legend of Korra, and once again, I think it's one of the best animated shows ever made, and I really, really love it. I know it's not as unanimously loved as The Last Airbender, but... I mean, I've got videos talking about this. Uh, you can go and look them up, thoughts on Avatar The Legend of Korra. And I did one for each season, but I love the way it advanced the world, and I really loved the characters in that show as well. To me, it was the perfect follow-up. Also, I have never seen the movie, because I have been <laughs> warned off of it so many times. But yes, I'm very well aware of the uh, emotional baggage, should we say, regarding this fandom and live action adaptions of this series. And my stance regarding live action adaptions is I'm actually against them most of the time. I don't see why they have to be made. I think animation is a perfectly valid method of telling a story and wanting everything animated to be adapted into live action is almost insulting, I think, to the medium. As if, if I want to go full hot take, angry man on the internet, it's almost as if, like, people are saying it's not valid as an, a well, people argue about whether it's an anime or not, but whether it's valid as an animated piece of media. But beyond that, I just think that live action series struggle, because when you're trying to adapt something that's been animated, you're not really all that limited with imagination on animated series or comics or I guess books if we're talking about adaptions in general. But when it comes to a live action series, suddenly you have to make it all make sense in the real world. Especially when you have real human people on screen, anything that's going to have to be a special effect has to pass the plausibility test. You know, it has to pass the, am I thinking about the fact that this is on screen and isn't real test. The only real reason I think there could be to make a live action adaption of something is the very reason that I think, spoiler, incoming, my take, is the very reason that I think this live action series adaption is actually really fucking good. And that's, I guess, fan service? There should be a better word for it, but like, if it's done right, and in my opinion, at least this aspect of this is done right. Translating the world that you have seen in an animated series into live action and seeing that world in terms of set pieces and costumes and design can be really, really fun and engaging. And yes, in my opinion, the live action adaption of The Last Airbender, which they should have called something else because it's very complicated to talk about now, uh, does that really, really, really well. And I've been really enjoying it for it. I also think of the Warcraft movie, I know some people didn't like the massive CG orcs versus the live action humans. Again, I would still prefer an animated adaption of some variety of the Warcraft universe, and I really hope they do someday get around to telling that story in that way. But as uh, a World of Warcraft fan, and as a massive World of Warcraft fan when that movie came out, um, my, my love of the franchise has waned a little since then, you could probably guess why. Um, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie and have only seen it once because I don't want to go back and rewatch it having heard all of the flaws that I apparently missed the first time around. But regarding Avatar The Last Airbender, um, I've looked around online because I have heard so much angry noise about this show and I'm four episodes into it and I'm really enjoying it and it's honestly kind of distracting because I'm watching it with, like, yeah, okay, it's not perfect. Some of it's pretty cheesy. It's kind of camp in places 
Um, which isn't always a bad thing, but you know, this is an adaption of a kid's show, so it's going to be kind of camp in places, but some of the dialogue is kind of corny, some of the acting can be a little bit uh, on the nose, I guess, but I, when I am into it, when I am engrossed in it, I kind of see past those things, and I don't think they're things that really necessarily you have to work to see past either. This isn't like some D tier thing that you have to be like, oh, it's all right if you just ignore this. I'm literally talking about like, you know, just nitpicks, just the odd line delivery, that kind of thing. So I've had a look around online, and I think I can uh, maybe put the people who don't like this show into two camps. The reasonable and the unreasonable. <laughs> I think the reasonable criticisms I've seen, even though I don't know if I necessarily agree with them, but like it's a valid criticism to make and it's being made sensibly, I guess, is pacing. People think that they've tried to cram an entire series of the animated show into eight episodes and it shows. I personally think it's fine, but again, I'm four episodes in, so maybe that changes. I think this is also a symptom of some of the things the unreasonable people are saying, which is I think you know, some people aren't like me, some people don't watch a show and move on, some people watch a show and then watch it again and again and again and again and then they know it beat for beat and word for word, which is fine. But I think if you're one of those people and then you are watching this live action adaption and it's different, you know, reasonably you might say the pacing's weird because it's different to what you're used to and it's a different format and it's a different episode length and it's a different amount of episodes. And then the unreasonable people are going to say, it's different, so it's bad. And there are so many of these unreasonable people because uh, some of the things I've been hearing about what they hate, like the tiny changes that have been made, I actually think this is probably one of the most faithful adaptions I've ever seen of an animated work. It feels like a rewatch, and as I say that, I feel like I can hear all of the unreasonable people screaming like, what the hell are you talking about? They changed this one line! They did this one thing in a different order! And it's like, okay, but hear me out, if you hear that there is going to be a live-action adaption of an animated show you like, why are you expecting everything to remain exactly the same? Nothing ever is in an adaption. And seeing as, you know, compared to other adaptions, this is one of the more faithful adaptions, especially compared to its own previous adaption, that horrible movie apparently. Why are you so mad? Why are you so angry? I don't... I don't get it. And maybe some of this is me uh, projecting my own, like... I think one of my bad tendencies is that when I have an opinion that people don't agree with, I feel very attacked when they just tell me their opinions. That is something I am trying to work on. But, um, I feel very much like, this is yet another thing that I'm going, this thing is good, actually, and everyone's being like, yeah, but I don't like this and 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 this. I'm like, could you just let me, like, tell you why I like something for once? And this isn't like, oh wow, Christian has some people in his life like this. No, people in my life are fine. People on the internet are like this. But anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. Those are my current thoughts on Avatar The Last Airbender. I reserve a right to change them if the last four episodes are poo-poo. But I have really enjoyed the first four. And if you have been put off from watching it based on what people are saying on the internet... I, I would advise you to give it a go. I didn't look up any opinions before going into this. I didn't look up, like, Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. I don't even know what it is on Rotten Tomatoes. I assume Netflix series end up there. Or if it's on a different website, I don't know. But I just, I looked at it and I went, huh, this could be, because it was released today, I was like, this could be really good or really bad. I have literally no idea. I'm going to do things the old-fashioned way. Click on it and make up my own mind. And funnily enough, I've come out with a positive opinion. Okay, now... Other topics, Dragon Quest. Remember last week was all about Dragon Quest, it was the thumbnail and the metadata and everything. How am I doing with that? Well, my Dragon Quest 7 playthrough continues. I am a decent ways into Chapter 2 now. Actually, no, I'm not a decent ways into Chapter 2, thinking about how long this game is. And it's still near the beginning of Chapter 2. I'm on the desert island. You'll know what I'm talking about if you've played the game. But that's not all I have to talk about in regards to Dragon Quest, because I spent most of my week trying not to buy Dragon Quest Builders 1 on Steam. And then I bought Dragon Quest Builders 1 on Steam because I am a weak-willed individual who could justify it, but still probably couldn't justify it. <laughs> so yeah, I've played a little bit of Dragon Quest Builders 1 on Switch before, but I wanted to get this version because it has all the DLC and some quality of life improvements and Steam achievements because I still care about those apparently. And I haven't got past where I've already been playing so far. I think I'm getting there though, but um, something I've noticed is... Uh, before I say all of this, just know that Dragon Quest Builders is a fantastic game. It has all of a Dragon Quest charm, and it is a really, really fun way of doing like an open world survival crafting freeform building game. Um, 
Obviously Dragon Quest Builders 2 improves on it, but Dragon Quest Builders 1 I think is still worth playing. That being said, it's a little janky in terms of menus. I haven't tried it with my Xbox controller, mind you, but with my PlayStation controller, um, for some reason, in the menu, circle is yes and X is no, and I think it's because when you look at a Switch, circle is where A is and B is where X is. And so I have to train my brain every time, going because there's no option to rebind that particular thing in menus. So every time I'm going through a menu or a dialogue in the game, I have to retrain my brain to be like, don't press X because that X hits it, that, that says go back, etc. Um, but that's my only, only gripe with a PC version. Other than that, it's absolutely solid. And when I'm done playing Dragon Quest Builders 1, I'll play Dragon Quest Builders 2 and Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and Dragon Quest Heroes 2 and Dragon Quest 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 8, 9, uh, 11, maybe 10 one day, maybe 12 one day. Dragon Quest. Ah, just put it in me. Just put Dragon Quest in me. The last thing I wish to talk about is RuneScape. Eagle-eyed viewers may notice in the bottom left corner of the screen that this account is not Iron Critigree. It is Critigree Whitey and yet is it is an Iron Man and looks very familiar. Why is that? Well, I changed my name. Why did I do that? Partially because now I'm advertising that I have a YouTube channel and maybe the occasional passerby will go, oh, I wonder what that guy's YouTube is like. And I check it out and go, oh, it's pretty funny. But the main reason is I am de-ironing my old school account and I've made a little community post about this and I apologize if anyone is disappointed, but I am only a thousand total level into the game, which may sound like a lot, but in terms of XP scaling is not a lot. And I am really starting to get a sense of the extra amount of grinding that lies before me, especially in terms of like... The main thing I really want to get into in Old School RuneScape is bossing because I really love the collection log system and how it shares it with your clan chat and like hunting for drops and that kind of thing and I, I feel like as an Iron Man as well it would be extra rewarding to do that which is why I'm not just de-ironing. The extra caveat I'm adding to this account is while I'm good to buy supplies for skilling to help me level up and stuff, I do still want to get all my own upgrades from bosses. So I guess it'll be a bit, I don't know what people classify as Bronze Man or whatever, but it might be a bit Bronze Man-ish or maybe just a little bit Tin Man-ish. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should call it Tin Man. <laughs> Never mind, Critigree YT, I should have called it Tin Critigree. But yeah, I really want to get to bossing and Prayer on an Iron Man in Old School RuneScape is just absolutely disgusting. Obviously it's 5 XP per normal bone, like 10 XP per big bone or whatever, and then like the way you actually want to train it is take it to the Chaos Altar, but then to get to the Chaos Altar it's a massive long run and you run out of run energy and you could be PK'd and if you want to unlock extra teleports to get closer to the Chaos Altar then it's all these extra hoops to jump through and so on and so forth. And it's just a dozen small things like that just like adding up to break this camel's back. Why is it always the camels? Wh who's breaking camel's backs? Leave them alone. But hear me out, here's another thing. I never really wanted to main an Iron Man in old school RuneScape. My quote unquote main account, my original one that I first tested out old school on long before any of these or long before most of these updates hit the game back when it first launched in 2013, uh, didn't get that far. He's like 800 total levels so there is still so much of old school RuneScape that I've yet to experience on a vanilla account. Even if we're talking about like RuneScape 2 back in the day, like I never got that far. And also the reason I play an Iron Man and love it so much on RuneScape 3 and that is not changing uh, is a few reasons which don't add up to my old school experience such as the economy being a poisoned well with microtransactions so as an Iron Man in that game it's important to me to be able to show off what I've done as like you know none of this is bonus star XP or whatever you could still argue that just fundamental game balance is a lot easier and that is another reason why I'm okay being an Iron Man in RuneScape 3 because while the XP you know gathering is a lot slower in that game um as an iron man it's a, it's it's also a lot faster in general than old school runescape anyway so it just tends to feel more rewarding i'm not saying that game doesn't have its own frustrations i've <laughs> i've documented them well in my adventures in killinor series but to me having played it more now one of the big selling points of an Iron Man in RuneScape 3 is to be able to say, wow, look, I got this drop. If I'm wearing this thing, you know that I got it. And the collection log in Old School RuneScape kind of serves that functionality. It tells people when you get a drop. Like, you can't just see someone wearing something in the open world who's not an Iron Man and assume that they didn't buy it. But still, like, the, the little sticker book collection thing that you can show off at any time in chat or whatever... Um, I really, really, really appreciate that about Old School RuneScape, and it kind of, like, in my eyes, kind of means, like, hey, you don't really have to be an Iron Man 
and again in the future maybe if I if I like max my account in old screws kit which is probably never gonna happen um, maybe I will go back and make an Iron Man and do an actual Iron Man playthrough then but for now I'm quite happy de-ironing. You may also notice that I'm a group Iron Man and wonder what Reese thinks about all this. Reese is fine with this. I already spoke to Reese about this. He said he's probably not even likely to play old school on any Iron account. I'm like, yeah, I kind of figured. So in summary, it is not the end of days. It is just a shift uh, in my ability to enjoy old school fruitscape because it's still quite a grind, even if you're just a vanilla account. People are making these crazy series about being an ultimate Iron Man and only being able to unlock one tile at a time and all this, and I'm just like, regular Iron Man is too difficult for No, group Iron Man is too difficult for me. So I'm tapping out on that. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode of A Weekly Waypoint. Let me know what you thought about anything that I just said down below if you like. You don't have to, though. I'm not your dad. Um, also, you can leave a like on the video, you do have to do that one, if you don't do that I'm coming for you, I'm going to find out where you live and I'm going to give you a stern talking to. Never threatened people to like my video before that um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you in whatever I make next, or wherever you are next if you don't like the video. <laughs>